What's going on, hockey fans? Dan K here for you. It's a pre-workout broadcast brought to you by GMU Sport. When you're on the road, you got to keep yourself in shape. And how do you do that best? You work with the great folks at GMU Sport. That's G, M is in Mary, U, Sport. Lucas knows that joke. That's a little inside because anytime Dan K has to find his tab at the bar, he says K, M is in Mary, a bunch of other letters after that. And he gets a chuckle out of every single bartender. And that's where I introduce him. My right-hand man. My consigliere. Mon frere from another mayor. And another man taking pre-workout. Mine today, the strawberry lemonade from GMU Sport. Lucas, what do you have? I believe I have the lemon-lime version. And it's very delicious. And if you're, if you're thinking to yourself, why are these guys taking pre-workout before they do the Dan K show? Well, it's because... We are fitting, we're fitting this recording in right now. It has been a busy couple of weeks, as you know, for the Dan K show. We've been on the road seemingly nonstop since September. We're about to get on the road to Nashville. If you're watching this tonight at 7 p.m., I have about 11 hours until I have to board my flight for Nashville to go check out the Nashville Spartans taking on the Metro Jets this weekend. So I got to fit in a workout. I got to pack a bunch of stuff. It's going to be a crazy day. Dan, let's get right into it. What do we got going on in the premiere? Let's get going. We start with the first issue at hand with our latest power rankings. We just did our power rankings last week. And in true power ranking fashion, we put the Charlotte Rush number one for the first time this season in the premiere. We have been bullied into this decision yep. by, by two young rapscallion, rapscallions. Not scallions. Those are, those are lizards, okay? <laughs> Rapscallions. Two okay. rogues. Two rogues, ne'er do wells. Yes. Two ne'er how often do well? Ne'er. Ne'er do they do well. And Lucas, we caved. And we put Charlotte number one. And they hadn't lost a game the entire year. Swooping in the team we ranked number three overall in the country, the Carolina Junior Canes, taking down the rush for the first time all season. Yeah, that, that's huge for the Carolina Junior Canes, taking them down 5-3. to three. I mean, you, you, you like to see teams getting mixed up in the Southeast for sure, but I think, Dan, we both agree that what this means for the Charlotte Rush is that they are no longer a top 20 team, obviously. <laughs> I think top 50 <laughs> maybe at this point. Could be top I, 50. This Because this is the thing. This is the thing. I'll be fair in our power rankings, and we take them very seriously. I just had a great conversation with it with an owner in the league privately kind of about how we put this all together my strength of schedule that i put together the, the adjusted strength of schedule based on results the the blind kind of resulting that we do where we put together a top 30 on each side without any interaction between one another and then we compare and contrast our notes on why and how we got to our personal top 30s to create a top 20 in the country amongst head-to-head -head, home and away showcase schedules all the kind of things that happen, the types of results, the wins, whether they're overtime, they're, they're close, they're long, defense, all these things that come into, into the fray to put these rankings together. And Lucas, when we get scarred like this, when we get scorched, okay, I feel like Daenerys being burnt by one of her own dragons right now. Dracarys is what I would say. That's a reference that's a little bit past its time at this point after the horrific final season of Game of Thrones, but I, I'd say Charlotte outside the top 50 right now for me at 16-1-0-0. You start thinking about relegation. You know, that's that's kind of where you're at um, at this point. I mean, we we joke, right? I mean, obviously the Carolina Junior Canes ranked number three, ranked very highly on their own. And when, when, two, when two essentially equal teams, number one v. number three, go together, you don't really see it as an upset, right? You don't see it as, as favorites or underdogs here. It's two even teams battling it out in the Southeast. And, you know, Dan, it's it's really funny we talk about these two squads because Charlotte Rush sitting at two, Carolina Junior Hurricanes sitting at three, the Potomac Patriots above them haven't lost a game in their last 10 contests. And here's the biggest story, and that's what I was about to get into, Lucas, is the idea that that one loss, as much as we joke about it, is ginormous. You look at it, 17 games played for Charlotte as of the time of taping. They're 16-1-0-0. That's 32 points. Potomac has yet to lose in regulation. Mm -hmm. So they've gotten the extra point out of their two losses. They've yet to go into a game this season and not come out with at least one point. So losing in regulation becomes huge in this division. And we go into a two-game weekend series between Potomac and Charlotte. So if you're Charlotte and you're a Charlotte faithful, 
you can look at this and you can say, hey, we're going to come in this weekend. We're going to win two against Potomac. And that loss isn't going to matter if, if that game against Carolina will never think about it again. You're Potomac. You come out with three or four points from a weekend here, even just two points. And you're sitting in a driver's seat now the rest of the way in this Southeast division. Charlotte's got to catch up. And, of course, we're talking about catching up between a team that hasn't lost in regulation and a team that's only lost once, right? So we want to put some context on that. But I think the big thing is right now in the Southeast, you've obviously got these three teams that are battling for it. And, Dan, a team you talked about during our power rankings and a team we've been kind of alluding to, especially yourself, the Atlanta Mad Hatters. Mm -hmm. Making some runs here, not just in the Premier, but in the Elite. Let's talk about that. I'm going to get into that. Last thing on Charlotte and, and Potomac, what I do want to say is it isn't an overstatement to talk about how important things are now because every point matters the same when you get to the last game of the season. We saw it last year in the Southeast Division with Nashville battling Carolina for the four spot. And this year, there is a huge difference between being number one and playing the winner between Hampton, Richmond, and Columbia the rest of the way and being number two and having to play Carolina. Big, big difference. So now let's get into Atlanta because I wanted to get that in before we talk about me being right. And and I was very right, okay? This Atlanta team, I put them 21 in the premiere last month. In the elite, I talked about this team being absolutely dangerous, potentially the best team in the Florida division. Right now in the elite, they're just two points behind the Florida Eels. They're ahead of Tampa. Tampa's got a bunch of games in hand on them, right? So if Tampa takes care of business, Tampa's still the number one team in this Florida division. But dangerous team in the elite. And in the Premier, grabbing a big victory from the Florida Eels and getting three out of the possible six points on the road against the boys from Fort Myers, huge weekend for Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, you talk about getting three out of possible six, right? That is, everybody kind of hold the line here a little bit. And while the Eels in their last 10 have been 8-1-0-1, Oh, Atlanta correction, Mad it's at home. I, I don't want to I don't want to lie. It's it's at home, okay? Guys, Dan K mistake. I look, I was right and I'm wrong. I meant to say Atlanta at home. They get three to six points at home, you'll take it. If you're Florida, you're happy with your four points on the road. But go ahead, Lucas. I'm sorry. But Atlanta 7-1-2-0 and in their last 10 as well. So you look at this Atlanta team that stands at 7-8-3 and 0, but seven of those wins, all seven of those wins in their last 10 games. So I think for this Atlanta side, definitely creating, you know, a little bit of trouble for these Florida teams that are kind of looking at them going, I don't want to play these guys. Yeah, and it's talent wise, when you talk about Atlanta, first of all, you love Coach Casillo behind the bench. Former San Diego guy, now over in Atlanta, originally from the Rochester Buffalo area. You talk about this Atlanta team with coaches, and every single coach at the start of the year said, the talent's not matching the outcomes right now. They've got more talent than most teams in the country. We're just waiting for them to take off. I wouldn't want to play them later in the year. And when you hear that from enough coaches, it just lights that lamp for you, Lucas, and tells you that this is going to be a difficult team to play against. 100%, right? And and we, we get these little scouting reports from a bunch of coaches uh, about a lot of different teams. And Atlanta's been on the mind of a lot of folks in the Florida, in the Southeast. And, you know, you, you just look at the program that they've built we maybe saw a, a, a little bit of it at the beginning of the year, but Dan, I think we're certainly seeing it now that the Florida division is not going to look the same in February that it does right now. It's going to be a very, very different place. I told you in the premiere, I think Bold City and Atlanta are going to advance to nationals. That is a huge statement out of Dan K. In the elite, I think Atlanta and Tampa have a really good chance right now. This Florida Eels team, here's the thing. The Florida Eels are suffering right now from what I think Charlotte suffered from for a long time in the Southeast, what I think the Northern Cyclones suffer from up in New England, what the Jersey Hitmen and the NCDC suffer from, I think it, from what Metro suffers from in the Great Lakes, what Fresno suffers from in the Pacific. These teams that are consistent and constant winners of their divisions, winners of 30, 40 games a year, teams that are dynastic dynasties, teams that know how to put together a winning roster every season. That's what Florida's dealing with right now. So I don't want Florida Eels fans to sit here and go, oh, Dan K hates us, or Lucas J is not vouching for us enough. And there's just, it's some, it, when you get to the level of success that these teams have, you're always held on a pedestal. Look at Jersey and the NCDC right now, last place in their division. You wouldn't talk about anybody else who's in last place, but for Jersey to be there, it's a storyline, right? This Florida Eels team, they're still on paper the best team in the Premier and Elite potentially in this division. But I just think right now this season, 
There's a lot of bumps and bruises along the way to try to get out of the Florida division, the nationals with how good it is. And especially depending on the final seating, right? You, you get to that, that regional playoff. If you're number one, you've got potentially two big speed bumps in Atlanta, bold city, and, and not to count out the Tampa Bay juniors either, because we've seen what this Tampa team can do when they're put up against it. They're a grindy team. They get into some corners and they battle, right? So, there's not a safe space right now in this Florida division for anyone. The number one is scared of the number four. The two is scared of the three. They're just all battling to see where it ends up. And, and I think this is the best way to approach playoffs, nationals, to not know who you're going to play until you play them, right? If you don't know who you're going to play until you play them, it forces the coaches to be coaches, right? That's what separates the great coaches, right, is the ability – to look at a team that we've got four days to prepare and draw up what they have to. I mean, obviously these teams at, in the regional playoffs, they've been playing these teams all year, right? But that skill is going to carry you into nationals where you might not know who your opponent's going to be, right? So I, I, I just think that I, I love to see this kind of, this mix it up kind of mentality, this new blood that's being injected. Atlanta shooting up in the standings. The Bold City Battalion, obviously a new team. Dan, huge this past weekend. They grabbed a 4 nothing overtime victory over the Tampa Bay Juniors. you love to see that as well. I, I just feel like this is going to be a fun division to watch. Yeah, Lucas, let's bounce around. Fresno, they go and play Bakersfield. They're still undefeated, right? How about the Northern Cyclones Premier? This is a Northern Cyclones Premier team. That, they're the defending champions, okay? They've been left out of the top 20 in the power rankings this past month because of some struggles. They have wilkes Bear, the wilkes Wagon, coming to town. A really tough team, a top 20 ranked team, and they score 14 on them in the Premier over two days and go 2 0, 8 1, 6 3. In the Elite, Coach Tim Plummer, 10 0, 1 0 at the time of taping. They're playing IHC right now as we tape this thing. It'll drop later tonight. But these Northern Cyclones teams in the Elite Premier dominate again. And it's a Northern Cyclones organization. We just talked about it. They win so much at the Premier and Elite levels that you kind you, you look at them differently and they have a, they have more of a tendency to fall outside the top 20 of a power ranking or top 10 of a power ranking or not fall number 1 overall uh, solely because of results that don't match what they're used to doing and, and i think that's a, a really a really big point right is you you have to continue to play your game right and and you have to continue to be the team that you want to be regardless of the opponent right and sometimes sometimes you'll get some lopsided scores but you have to continue to play your game, right? Because as as much as you're playing inside the division for 90% of the season, you have to keep up that tempo. You have to continue to play the way you want to play the game, regardless of who you're playing against. And that's what we say when we talk about mental toughness of a team, right? Is to be able to go and play anybody and continue to play the brand of hockey you want to play. And then when it comes down to these huge games that you have to go and win, you're still able to execute. 100%. And, and right now, where we're at in the season, Lucas, we're about to get to Thanksgiving. Okay? So there is no, at the, in the Tier 3 level in the Elite and Premier, there's no panic at this point. Even if you're in dead last right now. We, two weeks back, we got asked by a player on the Florida Junior Blades, what do you think about us right now? Like, are, are you worried about us? No. My biggest thing is this. Like, there's so much time left in this season. You're going to go through a Thanksgiving break where you're going to get a breather. You're going to go through a, a holiday break there during the, during the middle of, the, of December and in early January where you're not going to play hockey for two weeks to three weeks to one week, depending on where you play in the country. Then you're going to have another two to three months of hockey before you reach your playoff where in most places in the country, almost everybody's in, if not everybody has an opportunity in the postseason to make a push to nationals. You've got months to go. Everybody's still in this thing right now. There's nobody mathematically eliminated as far as I can see. I can do the math for you. No one's mathematically eliminated. Right now, the biggest key is are you getting better at the things you are doing poorly if you are not that number one team in the division? And if you are the number one team in the division, are you resting on your laurels when Dan Kay and Lucas Jones put you at number one in the premier power rankings? Look at a team like Carolina in the elite. They have not faltered. They have been ranked over and over again at number one in that elite, and they continue to dominate. They continue to live up to it. Like, it's just, it's an interesting place right now, this time of year. Your psyche, you know, you, you look at it, the Charlotte Russian elite, they beat Carolina, right? In the premiere, the, the 
the rush get get beaten by Carolina. It's kind of a given a, a tat a tete tete. Is it a tete tete? What do we call that? They're both out here beating each other, you know. But in the wrong side, you put one at number one, one at number five in the elite. You put one at number one, one at number three, and they just reverse on each other. Well, that's why this is you know it's so much fun, right? Because you look at these divisions and and you. You, you get a chance to really watch a lot of hockey. And we do watch a lot of hockey. So when we get, not to say surprised, but when when we get proven wrong, it's a lot of fun for us because that means that someone else is having a really, really good day. We'll take being proven wrong if it means that, you know, a five gets a big win over a one in a game that has, you know, a national viewing audience, right? Charlotte so, beating Carolina 3-1. Absolutely, right? We will take that any, any day of the week. So we're always happy to be proven wrong by teams having themselves a good couple of days. Yeah, and, and, you know, it's tongue-in-cheek talking about Carolina always living up to it, Charlotte not, this, that, and the other thing, right? They've both been dominant at both levels. In the Premier, Charlotte's been dominant. Potomac's been dominant as well. Carolina's been great in the Premier. In the Elite, Carolina's been dominant. Like, Potomac's been dominant. Charlotte's been great as well. Like, you look at the Southeast Division, they're going to be tough. But you look around the country right now, everybody is in it. What I need from the guys, you know, to, to put in that work with folks like – GMU Sport. If you felt like the show had a little extra energy today, it's because it did. Okay? This beautiful brand new, this is brand new, just hot off the presses. So they're, they're going to struggle to keep it in stock when Dan K talks about it. Strawberry lemonade, big. Strawberry lemonade. Get out there and try it out. But get yourself in the gym. Get yourself working each and every day. The big thing during this holiday season coming up. Don't just rest on your laurels, right? We just talked about resting on your laurels. Don't go out there doing that. We got to work through the break. We got to keep ourselves going. Good to get off the ice from time to time. Good to take the stick and put it down for a little bit of time. Good to get away from that rink when you need to, when you need that mental reset. But the mind, the body, it all goes together. It all works together. We got to keep working on all of them every chance we get. Yeah, you know, you 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 got to take that mental break. Got to take that physical break. Rest and reload. I mean, we're going to be doing the same thing, Dan. Like I said, we've got Nashville coming up this weekend. The Metro Jets coming to town to take on the Nashville Spartans. We're you're seeing some graphics right now. We'll be doing some fun stuff around Nashville. We're going to be at a brewery doing a live podcast. We're going to be pints. On, pucks and pints. We're going to be on the broadcast Friday night. We're going to be bouncing around the rink on Saturday. Then next weekend, we're doing an outdoor game in Charlotte again. Year two of an outdoor game between Carolina Junior Canes, the Charlotte Rush getting involved. Then we're going to Detroit. We're going to do the Metro Jets showcase out there in Mount Clemens. And then we're going to get a Thanksgiving break too. So we've got a little bit of a little bit of travel left for us, then a little bit of a break. But Dan, these next two weeks are going to be a blast. There is a lot of hockey still to go. A bunch of fun ahead. Pucks and pints. Also, pause if you want it to be. Dan K highly suggests that if you've got a dog, please bring it to the brewery. It's one of the best pastimes of a brewery. It's one of the reasons why I go is because usually it's a pretty chill doggo hanging around. Couple pups, you know. You never know what kind of dogs you're going to get, but if you can, pucks, pints. And unofficially pause with the Dan K show. Lucas, your parting words before we head on the road to Nashville. We'll see you out there. If you'll be in Nashville, come out, say hello at that Pucks and Pints uh, event there, four to six at Mill Creek Brewery. When Dan K's on a mic, it's always hockey night. We want to see you people everywhere. If you are a player that wants to get yourself to the next level, that wants to put the spotlight on your game, reach out to us at the underscore Dan K show. That's it, folks. I'm going to go finish this pre-workout and get to the gym. Going to go be dealing with goats later today. You wrangling them? Yeah, yeah, yeah a little bit. <laughs> going to wrangle some goats. <laughs> a little wrangling. <laughs> Only way you can get that cheese, you know? That's what they say. That's us, go, goat You're going to bring people. some goat cheese to Nashville? Uh, a little bit of goat cheese in Nashville. What, what is going yeah. on back there? <laughs> I got some. We're going to take pre-workout as we do the show. Oh, are we? Oh, I am. If you would like to, you can join. I'm not going to say no to that. <laughs> I feel like we do the show on pre-workout. You're, you're a bird. I'm a bird. Do you ever open up the pre-workout and it just puffs into your nose? And you're just like, whoa. What was that? It was GME Sport. It's delicious.